think Apollo 11 landing on the moon was probably the most inspiring thing in history. Arguably the most inspiring thing. Just level of inspiration that that provided to the people of Earth was incredible. And it certainly inspired me. I kept expecting that we would continue beyond Apollo 11, that we would have a base on the moon, that we would be sending people to Mars. But the United States has been without the ability to send people to low Earth orbit since 2011 when the, sh the shuttle retired. We need to advance space beyond what has been done before, and that we need to send people to Mars, expand our horizons, you know, to do more. In, Three, In two, 2002, one. Elon Musk founded SpaceX. We have liftoff. We have liftoff. Breaking the stranglehold that governments had had as the exclusive providers for access to space. Second stage ignition confirmed. When Musk couldn't lease facilities to launch his rockets from the continental United States, he moved a team of engineers to a small atoll in the Marshall Islands. Despite early failures, SpaceX eventually found success. In 2010, it became the first non-governmental organization to launch, orbit, and successfully recover a spacecraft. And in 2011, it was awarded its first NASA contract as part of the Commercial Crew Program. I thought starting SpaceX would be 90% likely to fail. The cost of, of access to space was just too high. Even if we doubled NASA's budget, unless NASA had good options for, for rocket contractors, they would still not make progress. So I actually just funded the whole company in the beginning myself, not because I thought it would turn out well, but because I thought it would fail. Elon Musk's sheer brazenness, his willingness to break old molds and make bold promises, has captivated space fans giving the company and its founders something of the popular following once enjoyed by Steve Jobs and Apple. And it's not just image. The company does things differently, relanding spent first stages on ocean barges, building its massive stainless steel Starship rocket, adding technological prowess to its popular sizzle. The holy grail of access to space is a fully reusable orbital rocket. We cannot have a base on the moon. We cannot have a city on Mars. We cannot become a multi-planet species without full and rapid reusability. And we've made significant progress towards reusability with the reuse of the, the, the Falcon 9 uh, boost stage. That, that, that's uh, somewhere around uh, two-thirds of the cost of launch, maybe, maybe 70%. And, and, and we've just recently been successful in catching the fairing, the, the nose cone of the rocket. And that is a crazy exercise with a boat that's basically a giant catcher's mitt. And the boat adjusts course automatically, and, and, and they, they, the two just, you know, maneuver to, to, to touch each other. While SpaceX is pushing the limits of rocket technology, it has also had some setbacks. A Crew Dragon spacecraft exploded during a test in 2019. The upcoming launch of a crew to the International Space Station is years behind schedule. Any new development process, especially for something as complicated as a spaceship, you know, that can safely fly crew, the importance focus for NASA is doing it safely, doing it right. You learn many times the most from the failures and the tests that don't go the way that you expect them to. So the incident with the uh, Crew Dragon last year, you know, testing the escape system on the ground, having an anomaly, and then going back and looking through the design, making sure that we fully understood everything that happened and, and really, you know, upgraded the design to make sure that Something like that could never happen again and be as safe as possible from beginning to end. And it really culminated in that successful in-flight abort test earlier this year. And there you just saw the trunk jettison again. Some really loud But the Falcon 9 that will launch this week is now considered a reliable machine with a proven record. That does not say there's no risk. The rocket will use the so-called load and go approach before launch with the fuel tanks being filled after the astronauts have boarded the spacecraft. 
This improves rocket performance given the dense, supercooled fuel that's used, but it's never been tried before with astronauts aboard, and there will be some tense moments leading up to the launch. The NASA team really took you know, a strong look at all of the pros and cons of all the different ways to do that timing between crew integration and ingress and vehicle loading and launch. And they really came together and, and, and determined that this was uh, the, the right, best approach to go do for this vehicle. SpaceX represents a big part of NASA's future, but it also has a lyrical link to the past. One of the sweetest spots in all the world for people who love space is pad 39A. It's the best pad. Best pad. I mean, <laughs> Apollo 11 left from there. Yeah. Virtually all of the lunar landing and, and orbital missions left from there. And now, I can't believe we get to use this pad. And that's it is my question. An insane honor. What does that wow. feel like? That is SpaceX's least pad now. Uh, we're not worthy. <laughs> <laughs> While this launch will be historic, Musk has his eyes on the future, too, already building a new rocket, dubbed Starship, capable of taking humans to the moon and even Mars. This flight marks an important first step toward those grander journeys to come.